I've been asked to talk about um, music and love and emotions and all that stuff. So allow me to worry for the first five minutes. Then hopefully you can ask me questions to counter the boredom. And then uh, talk about, you know, my emo words so and so um, okay, first and foremost, when you say, when you think of music and love, what comes to your mind? Love songs. Artists, break up, anybody? Unrequited love. Finally over spaghetti. Finally over spaghetti. You see that the demographic has been clearly defined. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, for most of us, uh, well, Okay, yeah, here, here's a here's a question I need to know. I need to know the answer. Si yung sayo dito yung twenty five and below. The honest po, twenty five and below, not nineteen twenty five. Twenty five and below. Okay, great. So the rest of us are I assume twenty six and above. Okay, so let me say, know what songs do you use? Because I might start using some. I don't know those songs. <laughs> well, you know the funny thing is music. Um, again, allow me to work for the first five minutes. Music actually is processed two ways. First, as um, first, to how you associate it with your emotions, your your experiences, and through it structurally. Oh, that's so boring, and I'm so annoyed. But please bear with me. So, music as perceptual emotion. I have to get through the boring stuff so we can go to the fun stuff. Okay, so basically think of music as a collage. You guys don't know what a collage is, right? In different pictures and has another bigger picture in post. So music acts the same way. It's a collection of different notes. But um, it forms an overarching theme. So it acts the same as a collage. And because of that, there's an imposed structure and order um, based on the context. Yes, I'm losing you already. It's not even five minutes yet. <laughs> Well, so yeah, question for everyone. Any musicians in the house? None. Wala? Okay, aside from me. Okay, that's why I know not to go too technical because I have a tendency to get into stuff. So basically, appreciation is based on the ability to process and predict what will happen next in the context of music. Wow, I never knew listening to Lady Gaga was so, you know, so complex. Or listening to Jonas Brothers. Oh, Brothers. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah, the problem thing is the problem here is that we think that music is processed by the frontal lobes. Uh, so yeah, we, music basically goes with ebb and flow, memory association. When I say memory association, what's your favorite song? Anybody favorite song? It doesn't have to be a love song. You got it back. Why? Sad. It's sad. Something, something about um, being expre new expression of longing for someone that you can't have. Okay. I'm scared to ask the next question. But is that because of an actual event in your life? Is that tied to an actual event in your life? Personally, yes. Okay, so there. See, that's the thing of music. Eh? The context, the, the, the aesthetic, the beauty comes based on the association. Um, like. For the life of me, I hate ABBA. Any ABBA song. For those who love ABBA, I'm sorry. I mean, no offense. Especially if you dance to it. But I hate ABBA because when I was uh, I was going to Pagayan de Oro, we were, it was a, my gosh, it was like an eight hour drive. And the only thing playing the city pair was a, a pirate album of ABBA. So by the time of the, the trip, I was so sick and tired of ABBA. I go to sleep, wake up, it's still ABBA. Poorly pronounced ABBA songs. Poorly produced ABBA songs. So, again, I said it's processed primarily by the Migdala and the Hippocampus. Why is that important? Wala lang, kasi there's a cute picture of a And um, it just shows that music is not processed in the same way you process a picture. Or literature. Or the stars, um, or the environment. Why? Because um, this is the interesting thing. Music is processed by the brain. 
the same way it will process smell. It will process the face of a person you know. It will process body language. It's more of the primal aspect. Why? Why? Bakit ganon? Kasi, um, basically, music triggers the behavioral response to social affective cues. Meaning, at the baseline, tayo lahat, we listen to music, not kasi maganda siya. We respond to music, not kasi maganda siya, or ang galing ng composer, but because the sound triggers social behavioral cues. It's basically a communicating communication thing at the end of the day. Um, a good example of that is, sino sa inyo po may alam ng mga mangyan? You know the, the mangyan tribe? Yeah, yeah. The mangyans use the um, kubing, the jaws harp, or the jew harp, depending on where you're from, to communicate. So, pwede magligawan yung katabi is using that thing para hindi malam na magulang. Uh, they can signal us to attack or any tribe using that, so it's all sounds of music. Um, so that's how the amygdala, so the amygdala processes, processes it as a social affective cue. Much like smell. So that's the hippocampus, that part, the almond shaped thing. Ah, sorry, the amygdala. And then the hippocampus is this. It's, it looks like a seahorse. If you love seahorses, I'm so sorry to destroy and ruin your image of one. But, here's the fun part. The hippocampus is connected to our emotional reactions. It's the one that triggers our emotional responses. Um, it works with the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal glands, and, and it is the one that triggers the release of cortisol, or cultural stress. Um, have you ever listened to a piece of music and it relaxed you? What song would that be? Anybody? Or what musical piece? Yeah. Then the music? Lady yeah. Gaga? Yeah. Okay. The fact that the hippocampus reacts to the emotional music or triggers the emotions that sound or music brings suggests that it is responsive to the potential of music to stimulate the release of brain chemicals and by virtue affect the emotional well-being of the person. Um, that sounds so blah 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 But the point is this, music can affect how a person feels. Um, today, it's used in therapy for PTSD patients and those with dementia to calm them. For those who are, who are um, you know, special children and in, in uh, sped classes, um, it's used to calm them when they're. It's so it's mostly a downer, it's like an actual downer. Those who love downers can get one for free. Mm. So, yun. Stefan Kolsch says that there are four sources of emotion within the music. This is the structure. Kanina, I explained to you how it. Um, I talked about how it um, connects to an experience in your life. Um, how. Sound triggers certain things. Now, going back a while ago, this is my amygdala and this hippocampus. The reason why um, I want to bring that up is because I want us all to understand that when you listen to music, you're not just listening to music. Your mind is going through the, its files and looking for an emotion or an event or a person or food that is connected or that is associated with that. Um, I've met one of, uh, when I was counseling before, I met this lady who hated uh, this Beatles song, um, Yellow Big Road. Because when she was raped, that was the song they So, you know, may mother, and we have this, um, there's another case that uh, whenever, whenever a person feels lonely, there's this guy who feels lonely and he misses his mom, his mom died, he plays a certain song that his mom would always sing to him. It's a, it's a nursery rhyme. So, that's how it works. 